G'day everyone, welcome to our lesson on AC, rectifiers and amplification. First of all, a quick summary on the difference between DC, whoops, used a paintbrush there when I shouldn't have, undo, DC and AC current. DC is very simple, it's what we've been dealing with when we draw a battery and a circuit. DC says, okay, there is a oops, positive and negative terminal to this battery. The current flows from the positive to the negative, that is the positive charges, and the negative charges, electrons, flow away from the negative towards the positive. So it's saying, okay, negative charges go this way, positive charges go the other way. It does not allow for those charges to flow in the opposite direction. Electrons cannot flow away here from the positive terminal unless you are recharging that battery but in isolation no, big no-no. AC however is often generated uh, by a sinusoidal system it's, it's rather you know a spinning loop with a flux inside it and if you were to sketch here the voltage over time it would look like this up and down up and down so this is an example of an AC electric source this is also an example of an AC source this is an example of an AC source it's anything where the direction of the current changes so the voltage changes from positive to negative I should also mention if this is the graph of the, of the voltage if the voltage is posi positive it will be pushing the charge in one direction and where the voltage is negative you'll expect the charge to move in the opposite direction these are all examples of DC currents like this that's a DC current this is a DC current this is a DC current it's any uh, electrical source in which the voltage either stays always positive or always negative you don't expect the charges to change their direction of motion so DC same which say direction AC alternating direction so it's direct current and alternating current and for some appliances you know like charging a laptop you want DC current you don't want AC current you want to push charges into something so if I had this AC current looking like this and I wanted a DC current out of that I want to rectify it here so there's two ways to rectify it full wave and half wave this is what half wave looks like you pretty much ignore all the negative voltages there so you can do this using a diode you just ignore them they get cancelled down to zero so that yellow line there is the rectified voltage for half wave but of course you're losing a lot of electric power here because this is still generating electric power a negative voltage can generate as much electric power as a positive voltage but you've lost that because you're still using half wave rectification so if you had full wave rectification we'll draw our original AC wave full wave rectification is much better because you trace the positive voltage here and then you preserve that power here it used to be a negative voltage you've turned it into a positive voltage that is full wave so half wave above and full wave below that's not the only thing you can do to an AC signal we can also amplify it so I'll scale these down slide them over here say I had an AC voltage and it went in to an amplifier voltage over time like this 
and it came out using the same scale like this we'd say that we'd say that voltage has been amplified but it doesn't just have to come out like that you know like a dilation it can come out as a shift it can come out as the negative of what it was it can come out as a shift and a dilation like so and the way we describe how it's going to change is using this V in V out graph I'm going to draw it up now I'll make up my own get my axes down So the horizontal axis is the voltage I'm putting in and the vertical axis is the voltage I'm getting out. Say I put in zero volts here, I'd get out zero volts. So I have another two axes going on over here. Input, output. and this will be voltage over time voltage over time say I had a graph that looked like this a straight line and when it gets to 1 here that's 5 volts out and then it tapers off here and here so when it's putting in negative 1 I'm getting out negative 5 volts then let's sketch over here say I have a 1 volt 1 volt and negative 1 volts an AC signal coming in looking like this the way it'll be amplified in the output the V output we say okay if I put in 0 volts I get out 0 volts if I put in 1 volt up here I get out 5 volts if I put in 0 volts I get out 0 volts if I put in negative 1 volts I get out 5 volts sorry negative 5 vol volts and then if I put in 0 volts again I get out 0 volts so this is my output but with the scale you can see I'm getting a much larger amplitude in terms of voltage let's try that again let's see if I can delete these but preserve my axes yes good let's say now I have a AC voltage source with an amplitude of 2 and it gets up to 1 and negative 1 along these lines here so I put in 0 volts I get out 0 volts I put in 1 volt I get out 5 volts Five volts. I put in 2 volts and I'm still getting out 5 volts but I've moved along coming back down putting in 1 volt again I get out 5 volts then back to 0 going down put in negative 1 volts get out negative 5 volts put in negative 2 volts still getting out negative 5 volts putting in negative 1 volts still getting out neg uh, negative 5 volts putting in 0 volts so the pattern of my amplified signal has these flat tops and flat bottoms this is known as clipping and it's a loss of information through using the wrong amplifier I need, I need an amplifier with a straight line that extends further out that way now we talk about the gain of amplifiers the gain is simply 
the gradient of this line here. In this case, I'm getting a rise of 5 over a run of 1. So the gain of this amplifier is equal to the gradient, and that is 5. That's the gain. The quiescent point is the point that's basically halfway between these flat ends, and here it is at 0, 0. Amplifiers don't have to have their quiescent point at 0, 0. It is equally valid to have an amplifier that looks like this. So when you're putting in 0 volts of V in, say here, your graph down here would start at 5, and then it would jump up when you're putting in 1 volt, it would be up at, say, 10 volts. And then when you put in 0 volts back down to 5. And then here, when I put in negative 2 volts along here somewhere, that's when my graph would finally touch that time axis there, the 0 volt line. So it's perfectly acceptable to move your amplification graph uh, around. So to summarize, DC, the current can either be, the voltage can be positive or negative, it just can't swap over. AC, the, you expect the voltage to be swapping over, that's alternating current there. The gain is the gradient of V in on the horizontal and V out on the vertical on an amplification graph. And the quiescent point is the point halfway between these two flat arms here. If you're trying to sketch the output of some AC input, input, it's very useful to sketch the same scale just below. And then you can run dotted lines down like this to make sure you have the right corresponding points always happening. This one got a bit wonky. I hope that helps you understand AC rectifiers and amplification.